Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Mitchell Ringos. The Ontario Provincial Police had to block off a section of the expressway earlier today after a transport truck overturned blocking off eastbound traffic. The transport truck fell over by the intersection near Red River Road. Police blocked off the entire eastbound lane around 3 p.m. as multiple cranes arrived to help lift the truck. The statement has yet to be made by the OPP and the cause of the accident is currently unknown. The Ontario government has taken another step into twinning Highway 1117 from two up to four lanes between Thunder Bay and Nipigon, which is planned to be completed by 2026. Silios Bellows has the details. Kenora Rainy River MPP Greg Rickford made the announcement in Dorian about the $107 million project, which is expected to create 750 jobs. The construction, which is set to begin this year, has an expected completion date by 2026. Rickford was highly supportive of the project and explained how important the highway expansion will be to the region. Northwestern Ontario in particular, it's high time that these uh, roads were, uh, were twinned. Uh, northern, but northwestern Ontario in particular, is really one of the only sections left uh, to twin. So I hope today is really about a legacy that moving forward within the next uh, uh, within the next uh, generation, if not sooner, the next uh, decade, uh, our highways are, are twinned. Superior North MP Patty Haidu was also present for the announcement, as the federal government will be footing $30 million of the $107 million price tag. Haidu said the community has raised concerns to her regarding travel on Highway 1117 and that this project is addressing those issues. So this is a very important project to increase the safety for people. Many people get health services on a regular basis in Thunder Bay. Uh, people go shopping. There are, there's trade uh, all along this corridor. So this is going to be a sigh of relief for many people. Once the newly announced widening is completed, 72 of the 106 kilometers of Highway 1117 will be widened to four lanes. There is currently ongoing construction on other stretches, and while Rickford was unable to confirm which phase they are at, he was confident with the progress being made. Having driven out here from Thunder Bay, uh, things are well underway. We're seeing we're standing beside a bridge that's uh, uh, under construction um, and uh, a significant portion of twinning well underway. Uh, so we want to be ready for the next stage and that's what today is about. Both Minister Rickford and Minister Heidi stress that collaboration between the provincial and federal governments is crucial in projects such as these that have a massive impact on safety for those in the region. Vasilios Bellows, TVT News. Despite being banned in 2020, birth alerts of Indigenous newborns continue to be reported in Thunder Bay. And this week, Kiwetanung MPP Sol Mamakwa brought the issue to Queen's Park. He's calling on the Ford government to take action and stop unlawful removal of babies from their Indigenous mothers right after they're born. Birth alerts are a controversial practice in which social service agencies inform maternity ward staff about mothers they believe will have issues taking care of their newborns. Is Ontario's 2020 directive just birth alerts under the different name? Can Ontario Question. can Ontario ensure Indigenous families that the colonial, oppressive, and discriminatory practice of birth alerts are not still being used against Indigenous families? Thank you. Ending birth alerts. Let me be clear. Answer is a critical step in creating a child welfare system that is focused on prevention and early intervention. Thank you again for the question. Thank you. Healthcare in the Northwest is in crisis mode in several communities. Late last month, the region was shocked when it announced the emergency department in Red Lake was forced to close for 24 hours. Now other hospitals in the Kenora District are coming forward with the strains they are facing with staffing shortages that have closed entire departments. Adam Riley has the story. We've had to close ICU and say for 12 hour shifts 14 times since September uh, 2021. Staffing shortages at the Lake of the Woods District Hospital have hit critical, never-before-seen levels, according to hospital CEO Ray Reset. Currently, the emergency department has a 44% staff vacancy, its ICU a 55% staff vacancy, and an overall 22% vacancy for the entire facility. 
Those numbers reflect primarily office staff, nurses and PSWs who are employed at the hospital and not physicians. Compounding the hospital's issues is the COVID-19 situation. Reset says when a staff member or physician gets sidelined due to the virus, it can have a domino effect. Well, they might be supporting four services. So now those, those four services, it's not just one service, those four services then have a shortage. And then that then needs to be picked up by other physicians uh, who are already fully scheduled for their services. It's a similar concern at the Dryden Regional Health Centre, which has moved into level four or control of their pandemic plan due to significant positivity rates among both staff and the community at large. CEO Doreen Armstrong-Ross says currently 10% of the facility's 300 staff are off sick due to COVID. Not enough to cripple the hospital, but enough to keep them on their toes. She notes healthcare staff across the province have been working very hard these last two years and need a break. However, at DRHC, they need staff available to cover those breaks. You know, once we get those 20 staff back, we're in a, you know, we're, we are definitely in a more comfortable position. We're looking at a lot of different solutions for the summer. Um, you know, we're hiring a lot of students and, you know, students of physio students of, in nursing, all those kind of areas to, to help out over the summer staffing too, because one of our priorities is to get staff on vaca- off on vacation. They, you know, they need it. Reset says concerns over staffing have been brought forward to the region's political representatives, and Armstrong Ross says it will likely be a topic of discussion during the upcoming provincial election campaign. Adam Riley, TBT News. The Ontario Conservative Party has promised to raise the minimum wage after the provincial election. It would rise 50 cents to $15.50 an hour and would make the second increase this year after rising to $15 in January. The wage increase has been promised to go into effect on October 1st, with government officials saying it will help workers keep up with rising inflation rates. Bonnie Chris Oweitati is the program director with the Lakehead Social Planning Council. She explains what the extra 50 cents would mean for minimum wage workers in Thunder Bay. So many people each month are making the choice between should I pay my cell bill or should I pay my hydro bill? Um, You know, choices like that are really difficult to make, especially when you have a family and children to take care of. Um, So any um, increase, even 50 cents, can eliminate some of those really tough to make choices for people uh, here in Thunder Bay. Chris Awati goes on to say the increase will mean around $1,500 a year extra for the average worker. Thunder Bay's living wage is currently pegged at about $16.30 an hour. The Thunder Bay Symphony Orchestra held a free concert last night at the Fort William Historical Park. The concert featured special guest Chris Dirksen, a Juno-nominated cellist and composer, and one of the Thunder Mountain singers. Almost every seat was filled to watch the collaboration, which brought together Indigenous and Western art. The set list was a majority of Indigenous music, composed by a number of Indigenous composers, including Dirksen herself. Audience members enjoyed listening to the blend in music, and Dirksen talked about the importance of Indigenous culture to classical music. I think... um it's very important to the Western art world and to how Canada can sound uh, combining you know, all of our shared history together. Um, I always say we've got to make the orchestra look a little bit more like Canada. We're getting together some of the finest musicians in Canada, both on uh, the orchestral side, sort of classical side, and on the indigenous side, uh, and all coming together for, uh, honestly, a musical party. Today was a big day for Thunder Bay local ski hills. A large crowd gathered to Loch Lomond as they held the dummy downhill event for the first time in three years. And Mount Baldy just finished up their skiing season. Jessica Clement has more. The conditions were fantastic for the dummy downhill this year. About 200 people came by to watch and cheer for the skiing dummies. And while most dummies weren't able to make it halfway down the hill, everyone was having a good time. General Manager of Loch Lomond, Jason Gary, says it's great to be able to gather again. Well, super exciting. It's just nice to be able to get outside in big, uh, big groups again and have some fun and, and cheer for something. The fun at Loch Lomond won't stop this weekend, as the hill will be open for at least another week. And we'll be hosting their annual Slush Cup this Saturday. Which is a, a water skip where we make a, a pond and then people come down the hill and skip across the water for fun and prizes, best tricks, best costumes, etc. And uh, we also have a 
free day coming up as well. Uh, we'll be announcing the details of that soon through our social media. Meanwhile, things were bittersweet at Mount Baldy as Sunday was their last day of the season. Skiers and snowboarders came by to hit the slopes one last time before the hill closed. We spoke to snow school director Vicki Vesna and some skiers to get their thoughts on the end of the season. It's always sad when it comes down to the last day of the season, but everyone in the ski and snowboard community love spring skiing. So the stoke's really high, but there's still a little bit of sadness knowing the season's coming to an end. It's really disappointing. It's like I always come here after school with all my friends, and it's really sad. It's the end because it's like a place we go every winter to have fun, and it's over. It's bittersweet, you know. It's been a great season. We've had a lot of fun out here, but spring is right around the corner, so it'll be nice to not have to bundle up anymore, but it's been an awesome season, and uh, glad I was able to be a part of it. Jessica Clement, TBT News. Now joined by sports anchor Kurt Black. Now local hockey, the walleye have really been pushing this series along, but the North Stars are trying to fight back. Yeah, the North Stars were in dire straits this afternoon to get their playoff dreams back on track. We'll have those highlights right after the break. 